Hello, this is Vern, and if you're feeling confused or hurt or disappointed because your man is not more affectionate, well, you are in luck because on today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you six reasons why this happens so you can start getting so much more of what you want starting today. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to your great life to be.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, heart-centered and successful women how you can create the relationship of your dreams as a result of stepping into the most alive and most feminine version of yourself with no need for gimmicks, manipulation or games. Now, a lot of women reach out to me and tell me in no uncertain terms how disappointed, sad or even angry they are that the guy they're with is not more affectionate. And I want to share with you six reasons why this happens so you can start shaping the kind of relationship you want instead of being at the mercy of this phenomenon. First reason why this happens is because the guy you're with may never have been taught that it's okay to be affectionate or worse, he might have been taught that it's weak and that it's effeminate and that it's something that real men don't do. So. If your guy is one of those men who were never really shown affection in a strong way growing up, it doesn't mean he can't change it, it just means that he's bound right now or he might be stepping into this model of the world where it's, it's a weakness to express that kind of affection which is vulnerable in and of itself is weak. So he's trying the best he can to live up to the expectations that he was brought up with which Granted, they're not great, but in his mind, he's doing the right thing by not putting himself into that weak position. Second reason why he may not be super affectionate or affectionate at all is because he is a logical dude that's not seeing the practicality of it. If he's not seeing that it's going to get him a lot more of what he wants, if he can get what he wants without having to step into it, then in his mind, it's why imagine that metaphorically speaking why would he wear a pink tutu and go to the streets where he can go dressed in a suit and get the same thing so sometimes he hasn't understood how much more depth he can experience when he uses it and on your side my dear maybe you have given him this uh, green pass to not be affectionate and he still can get exactly what he wants so he hasn't had to step into it to go deeper in the relationship or to get more of what he wants with you. Does that make sense? Number three, and this is a big one for not just men, but women as well. But in this case, since we're speaking about men, I'll share this very powerfully. A lot of men feel like being more affectionate is very, very akin to letting go of control. Why? Because when you are more expressive, you feel more. When you feel more, you need someone when you need someone that person has one up on you sometimes right that's the, at least the feeling that you have if you need someone and that person were to do something uh, not nice if he were to betray you in some way then you would be just crushed and devastated so to prevent yourself from devastation you put up walls in your life emotionally and physically because Physic, uh, physical connection is linked to emotional connection. So when you don't express yourself in a vulnerable way, when you don't express yourself in an effective, affectionate way, then what happens is you can have the illusion, because it's a fucking illusion, that you have more control. <laughs> Number four, it's linked to this one, it's he fears rejection. Why? Because if he gets very affectionate and you reject him, right? If you say, I'm not into it, not right now, like don't eat something of that nature, then the fear, the inner child that he has, or the wounded part of him, or the part of him of inside himself that we all have at some at different levels of wanting to be loved, wanting to be appreciated, wanting to be unique, wanting to be different. If that part is rejected, then there's little left to support yourself emotionally, right? So some men and women also fear rejection, and the less you express yourself in a physical way the less likely you are to experience that rejection outright in your face like a slam door shut, right? Number five is sometimes he was affectionate and he stopped being affectionate, right? Sometimes he was someone who was much more effusive and attentive that way and he's just lost it along the ways. Many times he stepped into what's called the law of familiarity, which means when you are around something or someone long enough, you take it for granted, it becomes familiar, you don't see it necessarily as the precious treasure that you once saw it as. And it doesn't mean that it has to be this way. This is a couple thing, this is not just a he thing. 
most likely than not, the couple, in this case, you and him, have not taken the time to create new experiences, to do new things, to connect in new ways, to have passionate dates, to do the things that you were doing at some point, to experience that level of surprise, adventure, excitement, uh, not just sameness, that allows him and you to feel more effusive and feel more affection towards each other. So if you've stepped into the law of familiarity and you're not doing something conscious and active to get out of it, more likely than not, your level of physical connection will decrease throughout time. It doesn't have to be this way, but it happens for most people who don't take the time and the conscious effort to create new experiences and to still find some ways to have that edge of newness and that edge of surprise. Number six, and this is an important one, my dear, because if you have connected to a man who, and this is number six, doesn't value connection, physical connection, and never will value physical connection, if he's a guy who just doesn't have it in him, it's not important to him, he actually feels repelled towards that type of connection, it's like a cactus that uh, doesn't like to be touched and has a lot of uh, defense mechanisms against it. If he's the kind of guy that doesn't need that and you need it deeply, you will suffer needlessly in this relationship. There's no right or wrong. There's men who are super affectionate and women who aren't. There's women who are super affectionate and men who aren't. If you're a woman who needs affection and craves physical connection and the guy you're with that doesn't and isn't willing to value it more for you, for himself, you will end up suffering. So rather than entering a relationship for years and years and years and hoping that he's going to change when he probably never will, you are better off leaving him, ending the relationship and connecting with someone that you have things in common with but also has that high value of physical connection. Again, not everybody values at the same level, but if you do and you're with someone who doesn't, this is a, this is a very, very losing strategy. And for most people, it was going to create heartache, ad nauseum, for the rest of your life. Which leads me to my last point. What kind of connection do you crave? If you crave deep, passionate, sensual, embraces, long kisses, heart to heart, sweaty hands, if you like that kind of connection and your guy is against it, you will suffer a lot. If you crave a medium level of connection and your guy has a similar way of connecting, then you're probably gonna be great. If you crave no connection and your guy is super into you and just wants to hug you and kiss you all the time, it's also going to be a losing strategy. A lot of people don't take this value of physical closeness as an important value when selecting a partner. And I can tell you from experience of helping tons of women in per virtually every continent of this world and with every kind of law challenge you can imagine, that it's a very important value to consider. How much physical connection does your partner need versus what you need? And are you willing to close the gap for each other? Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful to you in some way. If it is, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Number one, click like or thumbs up on this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel. And even better, if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified of new episodes as they come out. Number three, most important of all, if you like what you're learning right now and you want to take it to the next level, uh, I created a free video training for you. You go to the first line of the description of this video, click on that link, enter your name and email, and you'll start watching this free masterclass that I created to help you enter a more powerful relationship from a place of owning your worth. Now, if you're listening to me and you say, videos are great and I've learned a lot and I really like what you have to share, I want more specific hand-holding and help, and I want your guidance to actually step into the best relationship of my life. I don't have 10 extra years or five extra years to just trial and error and to reinvent the wheel and reinvent fire. Well, I'd be happy to figure out if we can work together, fill out an application on a link on the description of this video. And if I feel I can help you, my assistant will reach out, set a time for us to connect, and we'll speak. If we're a great fit, awesome. If we're not, no harm done. Thank you so much for connecting with me, my dear. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.